Welcome to this short video introducing the GRI Sector Standards. I will provide a brief explanation of the GRI Sector Program and the work we have been doing to develop the first Sector Standards. Let's start with an overview of the entire system of the GRI Standards and where the Sector Standards will fit. On this slide, you can see the structure of the updated system. There are three sets of standards, Universal Standards, Sector Standards, and topic standards. The universal standards, which apply to all organisations reporting in accordance with the GRI standards. The three universal standards, GRI 101, 102 and 103, are currently being revised and this figure includes the proposed new titles. The exposure drafts of these universal standards are available for public comment until the 9th of September. You can find more details about the proposed changes and how to provide your feedback on our website. The sector standards, our focus for today, will provide information on the most likely material topics for organisations in a given sector. And finally, the topic standards, which include disclosures that provide information on particular topics. An organisation selects and uses the topic standards that correspond to the material topics it has identified. Now, let's dive into the sector program and the sector standards. First, why is GRI developing sector standards? We are facing many global challenges, such as climate change, biodiversity loss, poverty and inequality, which require urgent and accelerated action from all of us. To tackle these challenges, more clarity is needed on what constitutes a sector's most significant impacts from a sustainable development perspective. Sustainability reporting by individual organisations has not always consistently addressed a sector's key impacts. By providing authoritative information on these impacts, Sector standards will help organisations apply the GRI standards and focus reporting on the issues that matter most. So at the beginning of 2019, we launched the GRI Sector Program with the objective of providing clarity on which topics constitute a sector's most significant impacts from a sustainable development perspective and creating a foundation for improving transparency and more consistent reporting from organisations in the same sector. Beyond the sector standards themselves, this program is also intended to surface emerging issues for the future development of topic standards. To help us define what a sector standard looks like, we have commenced the program with two pilot projects. Through these projects, we will shape the approach, format and language of the sector standards. The development of the sector standards is overseen by the Global Sustainability Standards Board, GRI's independent standard setting body, following the due process protocol. The content of sector standards is based on both stakeholder input and existing research and authoritative references. A multi-stakeholder expert working group drawn from around the world and representing diverse constituencies, including civil society, investors, business, labour and mediating institutions will be convened to develop each sector standard. So how will sector standards work? What we know so far is that sector standards will describe the sustainability context for a sector, outline the topics that are likely to be material for an organisation in a given sector based on the sector's most significant impacts and help organisations determine what to report on these topics. The first draft of a sector standard has four main sections. In the introduction section, you can find a list of the types of organisations the sector standard applies to, along with information about how to use the standard. The next section, sector description, provides an overview of the sector, including its activities, types of business relationships and context. The third section, sector topics, is the core of the sector standard. This section describes the topics that have been identified as likely material for an organisation in the sector. It explains why the topic might be material, outlining significant impacts and how these impacts occur, 
as well as drawing on international instruments and other supporting references. It also lists disclosures that have been identified through the development process as appropriate for reporting on the topic by an organisation in the sector, as well as providing resources that can assist an organisation with its reporting. Finally, the glossary provides a list of defined terms that are used in the sector standard, and the bibliography includes all of the references that were used to develop the content. The exposure draft of the Universal Standards states that an organisation reporting in accordance with the GRI standards is required to identify its material topics and use the sector standard that applies to its sector where available when identifying these material topics. This means that an organisation needs to review each topic described in the applicable sector standard and determine whether the topic is material to report on. It is important to note that the sector standards are not intended to be a substitute for an organisation's own process for identifying material topics. Not all topics listed in a sector standard may be material for all organisations in that sector. Similarly, there may be other topics that are material for an organisation that are not represented in a sector standard. Consequently, an organisation is still required to identify material topics according to its own unique circumstances. A sector standard can also help an organisation determine what to report for their material topics. In addition to reporting on how a topic is managed using GRI 103 material topics, the exposure draft of the Universal Standards requires organisations to report for each material topic the appropriate disclosures from the GRI standards that correspond to the topic. If a material topic does not have a corresponding topic standard or the corresponding topic standard does not provide appropriate disclosures for the organisation's impacts for a material topic, the organisation should report appropriate disclosures from other topic standards or other sources. In a sector standard, for each likely material topic, you can find a section called what to report. Here, you will find a list of disclosures that have been identified as appropriate for reporting on the topic by an organisation in the sector. This list includes disclosures from topic standards and may also include additional sector specific disclosures and guidance if needed. Based on the proposed way that sector standards will be applied, an organisation would only use the what to report section for a topic if they have determined that the topic is material. At the moment, during the pilot phase, this is how the what to report section looks. You can see here that this example includes disclosures from GRI topic standards, as well as additional disclosures. And the text highlighted in grey is extra sector specific guidance that should be used when reporting on the relevant GRI disclosure. You can also see a list of resources that the organisation may find helpful when reporting on the topic. As I mentioned, we currently have pilot projects underway. These will produce standards for agriculture and fishing, oil and gas and coal. Prioritising sectors for developing standards is primarily led by the significance of impacts. The higher the impact a sector has on sustainable development, the higher its priority. In addition, our initial focus will be on upstream sectors that provide fundamental needs or basic materials on which other sectors depend. Ultimately, the aim is for the GRI sector program to cover all high impact sectors. All of the information I have described to you during this session is based on the work we have done so far in the pilot projects. On the 8th of July, the exposure draft of the first sector standard, oil and gas, was released for a 90-day public comment period. This public comment focuses on two areas. Collecting feedback on the value, clarity and feasibility of the proposed concept for the sector standards and testing the completeness and relevance of the oil and gas content presented in the exposure draft. If you would like to review the first draft sector standard and provide your feedback, you can find the information on our website or contact us by a sector at globalreporting.org. We hope this has been informative. Thank you for watching.